There is no finer a line than the one that separates failure and success. When you think about how a fraction of a second, an unforeseen variable, a slight miscalculation can ultimately mean the wrong result. The one you didn't want, that dreaded word, failure. And when we see failure, we think, well, back to the drawing board. That wasn't it, we simply missed the mark. But what I'd love to point out is how so much of the time this isn't the case. Right? We erroneously judge our approach based on one outcome, one swing of the ax. The tree doesn't fall, so we blame ourselves and doubt the process. And it's like, I get it. No one wants to continuously jam a square peg into a round hole. It's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about giving yourself a chance, not walking by the thing you need. And far too often, we tear it down to start over because we assume the approach is wrong when sometimes it's not the approach. Sometimes things don't work at first. Some things take a while. Sometimes it's just reps. And I started thinking about this a while ago. Last year, I saw this random statistic kind of halfway through the... Uh, the NFL season that said uh, fourth down on fourth and one, fourth and short, coaches decided to go for it 53% of the time. I think it was. That number might be slightly off, but right around there. The idea is uh, that there's risk involved, which is what makes it a tough decision. And what I find interesting is that the decision to go for it on fourth and one ends up being one of two things. It's either creative, bold, and, and daring, or it's stupid, it's unnecessary and reckless. All depending on if they get that one yard. And hey, maybe they do. In which case, how great it was that they had confidence in their team. But maybe they don't. And then it's, hey, don't you understand your offense's limits, your team's limits? What are you doing? In both cases, the outcome determined whether the approach was the right one. Regardless of how little differentiated the two. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, how does this apply to my life? How many times have I metaphorically gone for it on fourth and one, didn't succeed, whatever it was. Let's say, you know, my first YouTube video, since we're here. And, and, you know, well, I walked away at that point. Like, imagine saying, I put this video out, I didn't get the right outcome, so this isn't for me. As far as I can see, it's the same thing as a coach failing on fourth down and saying, you know what? I'm never going for it on fourth again. I mean, it's that irrational. Because as counterintuitive as it seems, you can't judge the value of a pursuit on one outcome. Sometimes you don't even need to change much, you just need to have the courage to show up again. And going back to YouTube, which I've talked about you know, before, the, the same thing has applied. It's like there are videos that I thought were great, that are kind of buried on this channel, underperformed, and some I wasn't that excited about that did extremely well. I don't know why, but I do know the approach was the exact same for both. You know, no difference. They did, however, get different outcomes, different results, and I just think, like, imagine if I assumed my approach was flawed because of the ones that didn't meet or exceed expectations, right? That's why there's so much power in repetition. And yeah, like the coach on the side of the field, we're examining, we're adjusting, we're improving. But the point is, why be so quick to doubt ourselves and our ideas and our plans? Because I do think to walk away from something you believe in after one bad experience is like that coach saying, no, fourth downs are not for me. There's a saying attributed to Thomas Edison. He says, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. How maybe it was a slight tweak, maybe it was a minimal change in perspective, or maybe it was just showing up one more time. Picking up the ax and taking one more hack at the tree. And that's really it. The most important lessons we learn in life are simple. Simple to understand, but they elude us. And so let's remember that making our way into the world, how fine that line is between success and failure. 
How sometimes they look like one another. How the very thing needed to win, overcome, succeed likes to disguise itself as failure and suggest that you try something else. When in reality, you could be right there knocking at the door.